Reviewer, and welcome to Ask Your Wasteland Reviewer. And this is a special video that I've been doing every time I hit a milestone in terms of subscribers on my channel and just hit number 700. So that's pretty exciting. And, you know, only a couple hundred away from a thousand. I'm going to have to do something extra special for that one because I didn't think it was ever going to happen. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to get to 700 either. But I'm excited. I have plenty of questions actually this time around. So, pretty excited about that too. And so, without further ado, let's get started. And I was asked, which components of movies have the greatest impact on your enjoyment? So, for me specifically, I see film as very much a visual medium. And I love cinematography. I love how everything is framed and colored with the shadows and the lighting, and all of those different kinds of things. And I love, like, if something looks amazing, I could at least get some level of enjoyment out of it. And obviously everything else needs to come along to make a film truly great, but if you have great visuals, you have something that's impressive that is maximizing the medium of film through the use of that visual those visual techniques and I'm a huge fan of cinematography I love Roger Deakins um and if you it's like even just watching the Batman recently just being in awe of some of the framing choices camera angles the use of focus and all those different kinds of things to create an experience while watching a film my second question is which YouTube reviews of yours are you most proud of? Similarly, what written reviews are you most proud of? So, honestly, some of the things on my channel that I'm most proud of, I'm definitely proud of back when, this was years ago, I wound up doing reviews for some of my favorite films, and I remember doing my Lord of the Rings ones, and those were some of the first ones that I really felt my passion coming through. And, like, <laughs> they were like 15 minute videos. But it was something where it's just like there's a deep appreciation that I could feel as I was talking about those films. I was extra proud of them. Um, some of the other things, like I have my my talk show, which is pretty new. I have my Lost in the Wasteland show and Welcome to the Wasteland and my podcast. I feel like Welcome to the Wasteland are the ones I have the most fun with taking a deep dive into a particular film. And I really felt that... Some of the ones I'm really proud of. I had so much fun with my Eyes Wide Shut one. Um, it was a fun time uh, with Vinny, Aaron, and Frank, of course. Um, I loved my No Country for Old Men one. I had so much to say, and the dialogue that I wound up having with Matt and Alex on that one really m were great. And I had such a fantastic ch time doing that video, especially in person. That was one of the first videos I did in person post-COVID. And it was a deep dive into a film that I have such great appreciation for. And, you know, some of these films, it's like I do have that deeper appreciation for, and they do have a deeper connection for me. Um, taking a look at my written reviews, I, in terms of some of the reviews that I'm most proud of, I, I think the articles that I wind up feeling the strongest about are my Wasteland Vintage Roadshow articles. And the two that really stick out to me, one was The Last Waltz, because I felt like that was something that transcended my love of film and connected with my appreciation and my love of music. And I was able to hit both of those passions of mine and build a deeper context and a deeper narrative in those articles and fleshing out the very personal things that I felt towards them. And my other one was, oddly enough, my Color of Money one, where I got to talk about, I kind of treat it as like a dual article focusing on the, the hustler and the Color of Money. And I have such a deep appreciation for both, both of those films, and it felt very special being able to sit and write about them. And, of course, my first one that I did was Lord of the Rings. It all comes back to my favorite film, apparently. And it felt special, being able to sit there and really flesh those things out. And, honestly, some of the ones that I've been able to do in terms of Scorsese's that really focused on, like, Italian-American culture felt much more personal in being able to make those connections because that's an experience I live. 
being an Italian American, and I really appreciate those experiences. Now, <laughs> have any of your students ever discovered a YouTube channel and movie reviews, any funny stories? So I'll tell you about the first time. So my first ever class, I was doing a little assignment in class where I sent out surveys and had to answer particular questions, and we used that data for summary statistics and one of them was how many films have you seen in theaters that year that were new films and you know I think the highest one was 12 so obviously there's a film fan in that class but when I answered the question I had like 120 and uh, <laughs> I did that on purpose so there would be an outlier so I could show what those kinds of pieces of data could do to manipulate the summary statistics and some of my students, two in particular, Zach and Brody were like, what do you mean you've seen that many films? Like, why? And they did some snooping and they found my YouTube channel. So those were, they were the first ones, so good for you. And then my coworker Steve blabbed his mouth to a bunch of my student workers at one point and a whole entire group of my tutors one semester watched my IT review when that first came out. So those are definitely some of the more fun ones, like finding them out. Some of my some of my classes have been a little bit have a little bit more initiative and are a little more curious looking into those things. And some of them were completely ignorant and just moved along and didn't say anything about the ridiculous amount of movies that I watch. But you know, it's it's interesting because like I don't go around advertising it to a bunch of college students because I don't really feel that professional. But you know, they see them, they see them, they're out there, they're public, they're not like hidden videos and stuff like that. So if they find them, good for them. Uh, I gotta ask my favorite Bollywood film, and to be honest, that's an area that I haven't really explored a whole lot, to be perfectly frank, but I do notice that especially in New Jersey, you do get a lot of Indian films that pop up, and one of them in particular that I got to see was Gully Boy that came out a couple years ago, and that wound up being one of my like top 25, top 30 movies of that year. I absolutely loved it. It was about a young man who wanted to become a rapper, and it was like a two and a half hour epic, and I loved that film, and it hit and resonated with me very deeply, and I hope you know, a lot of people here wind up seeking out that film when they get a chance because it was definitely worthwhile. Uh, some of my favorite childhood films. So, I watched a lot of Shrek. <laughs> Obviously, I'm still a humongous fan of Shrek. I watched so many Disney movies growing up as a kid. Um, I loved Beauty and the Beast. Still love Beauty and the Beast. Love, loved Monsters, Inc. Still love Monsters, Inc. Some of those movies that I watched a lot when I was a kid that probably haven't watched a whole lot as an adult, like Heavyweights and The Mighty Ducks, are definitely movies that I watched a lot when I was a kid. And those kinds of films, it's like they have that, like, I watched those, I watched Return to Oz, which was really dark, honestly. And, you know, I recall very distinctly going to the WOW video in my hometown of what, uh, Hatton Township, New Jersey, and renting the Troll in Central Park. And I kind of want to get it on DVD if I can find it because I always wanted to watch it again. Um, also, the, 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 those blue films like Rock-A-Doodle-Doo and stuff like that, I watched those a lot as a kid, too. Um, world Cinema. I think the... I, if you want to hone in on that to, like, non-English speaking countries, because I watch a lot of British stuff, so there's that too, but I feel like the places that really speak to me the most have honestly been Japan and Russia, because I'm a huge fan of Tarkovsky, and I've watched Stalker and Solaris so many times and those are definitely films that resonated with me. I own Mirror now um, and some other films that like I really connect with his films like Ivan's Childhood and I really appreciate those films a lot and will keep on watching them. I do have certain films especially like Japanese films in terms of Akira Kurosawa. I'm a huge fan of Kurosawa. I've watched a lot of his samurai films, and then Ikiru and um, 
films like that as well that aren't focusing on like the samurai stuff but you know it you have seven samurai ron rashomon um and just um yojimbo so many films that really spoke to me and i really appreciate it and like films in recent years like Thelma was something that really hit me very deeply when I saw that. And, you know, I'm a big fan of getting a chance to see all the international best picture. Like, I'm a huge fan of Vinterberg and seeing The Hunt and Another Round. Those are big films. And, you know, there's a lot to appreciate out there. And, like, obviously Bong Joon-ho has really captured people's uh, attentions, too, with his films like Parasite. Uh, Murders and Memories, I want to see that very badly. So, definitely have some of those films. Top Best Picture winner, Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Not going to surprise any of you at all, ever. Um, other ones, Ben-Hur and No Country for Old Men are probably some of the top ones for me specifically. That like They're some of my favorite films, period. Whether they won Best Picture or not. But they did win Best Picture, so obviously those are the ones top for me. Um, we have, <laughs> who do I prefer? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and Kurt Russell. As a kid, definitely would have been Sly. Like, I watched so much Rambo and Rocky as a kid. But as an adult, I have a very big appreciation for Kurt Russell, his work with John Carpenter. So, you know, I'm betraying my Italian-American roots and voting against Rocky. Um, but, sorry, Sly, and to be fair, Arnold was never going to be in that conversation for me personally, but God, do I love Total Recall, The Terminator, and everything. But, really, Kurt Russell, is, like, I love his personality. He's so great in films like The Thing and Escape from New York and Big Trouble in Little China. All those characters are so different, too, and God, his hair. Love it. Wonderful hair. Um, do I have a Letterboxd? Yes. And you can find me on Shane Kanto on Letterboxd. Basically, so I have to admit this, and this really threw off my lovely little um, graph there, my uh, bar chart, um, is because when I first got Letterboxd, I just went through and rated all my favorite movies. So... <laughs> Like, there's all, like, these fives and four and a halves in there because I did that. Um, but since then, I've made it almost exclusively where I put the new films that I watch so that I can rate them, rank them, and keep them there, and back them up on a spreadsheet. So if you go into my letterbox, really the only things that you're going to be seeing are new releases that I watch and what I rate them. I don't write reviews on them. I write two videos and a lot of times write full reviews of them or add them in some kind of summary article each month. So like, yeah, don't go on there expecting to see reviews from me. So, but if you want to see what I'm watching and new films that I'm watching to get some ideas, because I watch some obscure ones, go ahead and check out my letterbox. Um, thoughts on Obama's list of 2021. So, Film list 2021. So I'm a, honestly, he has a really great taste in movies. So like every time I've looked at it, I was just really impressed by it. And I'm trying to find a specific list. So here we go. Drive My Car, amazing film. Uh, if it wasn't for Worst Person in the World, which also is on this list, top two foreign language films of the year, amazing. Summer of Soul, incredible concert documentary i love it west side story blew me away did not expect that to wind up being that great um with that being a remake power of the dog one of those films that like nailed me right at the end like up to that point i'm like oh this was really well made reminds me a lot of there will be blood but like something at the end nailed like just struck me like bolt of lightning and now it's one of my top films of 2021 pig Pig. Nick Cage should have been nominated for Best Actor. Sorry. Um, Passing, I thought was a really impressive film. I was pretty impressed by this, and I think Ruth Nega especially deserves a lot of praise for that film, and Rebecca Hall for directing it did a really impressive job. The Card Counter, boy is that the feel-bad movie of the year. Oscar Isaac, great. I thought Tiffany Hannish was a little awkward, but like, 
that's a film like it's Paul Schrader. Like there's something other there. Judas and Black Messiah. How did they both get nominated for supporting actor? So BS. But such a great film, incredible performances. I am so glad that Old Henry made this list because Tim Blake Nelson in this Western is killing it. And this is such a great film. And The Last Duel, so at least Matt, myself, and um, Barack Obama all saw The Last Duel at least. Because Ridley Scott showed that he can still do it. And the fact that House of Gucci was getting all the potential awards buzz really upset me. Tragedy of Macbeth, because taste. Uh, <laughs> chef's Kiss. Come on, come on, Joaquin Phoenix is great. I'm a huge fan of Mike Mills. If you haven't seen 20th Century Women, go check that one out. And Covadia uh, Ada. Oh. I remember people complaining when another round won Best International Film last year when they're like, but this existed. And I'm like, how dare you? And then I watched it, I'm like, mm. they have an argument to be made. That is a devastating but incredible film. So what are my thoughts on his list from 2021? Very impressed. Underperforming video. Um, to be frank, like none of my, like not a whole lot of my videos really are like killing it. Um, but like, you know, I make so many winds up collecting views and stuff like that. I have quite a few that have cracked a thousand views at this point. Really makes me happy. But most of them, you know, I'm happy if they crack 20, 20 views and stuff like that. But you know, some of them just don't hit, hit the algorithm or whatever the hell. Um, but to be honest, a lot of my shows don't get a ton of views. I think, and that's okay, because I do them for fun. Like, I do those things because I love connecting with people, new people talking about movies, and being able to do those videos to break down some of my favorite films and taking these deep dives. I live for my Welcome to the Wasteland show. That is probably the thing that brings me the most joy in terms of movies. Um, so I'm going to keep doing them, even if there's like zero views. But I think my Shutter Island one has had 20 since Friday, which makes me happy. That's pretty good, honestly, for one of those videos. Um, because, you know, they're hour plus a lot of the times. Um, are there movies I won't review? Um, there's been certain times where I've like watched a film and really did not feel connected enough to be like, you know what, I can't really string, like, that's mostly writing reviews. Like, I won't review, write a review if I don't feel like it really, really articulates something important to say. Um, and I've had this going back and forth in my head because of, you know, this Unabomber movie and then um, that Port Arthur massacre movie. I'm, it's a struggle to write reviews about these films, like, and especially the um, Nitram. It was a great film film but like it felt so dirty talking about it and trying to put a spotlight on this guy and focusing on his life and those are the kinds of movies that makes it hard and like some documentaries are hard because like like I did that Fauci review and just I doubt that anybody watched the movie that said all those things that like I got some horrible comments in my comments section and it's just like did you watch the film? Or, like, did you go in without, like, your preconceived notions of things? And, like, that's the thing. Sometimes if it's really political, I'm like, I might not even want to bother because it's just going to me, cause me stress. It's not even going to be worth it. So those are the kinds of things that, like, go through my head when I'm thinking about picking a review. And my last question is boutique physical media. So I have an ever-growing collection of Criterion uh, collection movies, and I love them. They're so great. I also have some good Arrow Video ones, and Kino, really like Kino, and there's, like, I have my Black Narcissus uh, Criterion there, here's, like, Blowout, Bloom is Warmest Color, Bottle Rocket, like, I have a lot of, like, G-Kids make some nice ones, too, they have some nice cases, I have my Criterion Collection here of Cassavetes, um, I'm trying to find... Um, one of my Kino ones, but in general, like, Kino Lorber puts out some really nice, um, boutique physical media as well, and, like, I have DVDs from Film Movement and stuff like that, but
But in general, it's just like sometimes it's nice to get like a really nice like case. And like Criterion has all these wonderful materials. And I've been having a ball with some of them doing um, some of my favorite films videos because I'm using some of the materials in it. Like I have a really cool uh, box like a set for Taxi Driver. So if you haven't seen my TikTok before, go on and check that out. My video on Taxi Driver, because I, I incorporated some of those images. But in general, I have a lot of them. So I have a lot of movies. As you can tell, this is real. These are real movies but sitting behind me. I've had some people being like, they kind of look like a fake background. I'm like, it's real. But those are all of my questions this time. And I had a lot of great ones, and I really appreciated people sending them in. But hey, you want to add some questions for the next time, hopefully when I crack 800? Comment below with some questions, and I'll add them to my list. And, or just message me if you ever have questions and stuff like that, and maybe I'll do an impromptu video. But thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All of you wonderful people out there for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.